Well, yesterday in Parliament, there was a forum. Uh, are we uh, all agreeing on the 7th of November date, as in the first Monday in the month of November in an election year? Are we agreeing on that day? There was a forum to uh, get opinions on that. Here on the show this morning, uh, we've got a good conversation around that subject as well. We're asking all the questioning, a lot more electoral commission conversation uh, and all on the elections uh, this year mm. here on the show. Mm. And uh, we're bringing you all these conversations because we know it's just uh, less than four months to the election. Mm -hmm. Many of you, again, in two minds, not necessarily as to who you vote for, as to whether really the election is coming up or not, because you don't tend to feel the atmosphere uh, of the times as far as we're concerned. But the media coverage is ongoing. Uh, the political parties and their representatives, uh, their flag bearers are also on the campaign trail. Mm -hmm. And um, the Electoral Commission, according to what they tell us, somewhat, is also on its uh, activities. And so what the members of parliament uh, think about how the Electoral Commission is prepared is critical to our conversation. Definitely. Uh, but today also reminds us of this. I want you to watch this. Forward here. To answer to this chart, very last casual. <laughs> what does it mean? Oh, we are sorry. You, you put your, I don't want to say too many things. What I'm stressing is that the authority of this country mm -hmm. must be upheld for peace. The ordinary people, the year 20,000, you, you know. Ordinary people sold their small properties and left this country flat. Look at that. Because of what? Because of what? They are not entitled to sleep peacefully? Because of people of this kind? Well, so it's the election petition case that was before the Supreme Court. But this very one uh, in point is um, when, uh, is it George Osefriye, who was um, a former general secretary of uh, the MPP, uh, was uh, were held before the Supreme Court yeah. for contempt mm -hmm. charges. There's quite a number of them, actually. Yeah. yeah. We had Ken Krenchiankra. We had... Uh, is this Stephen Atubiga? Atubiga, yes. Yes. And yeah. then we had one more person who said he was not part of them, really. So, but, the, uh, but we're playing, you're giving you a recap because we know that um, three or four others, um, and that includes a radio station, yes. a presenter and two others, or mm -hmm. panelists, uh, had appeared on a, on a radio station here in Accra. Once and uh, they spoke some uh, unwarranted words against the Supreme Court judges. That prompted the Supreme Court to summon them for contempt charges. And they will be appearing before the court, interestingly, today. Yeah, today, 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 today. We'll gauge the mood in the court ahead of this hearing. Trust me, all eyes and ears will be on this one. Everybody is waiting to see exactly what the judges will do to these four when they appear before them. And we will give you all the feeling here on the show. We understand that the hearing will be at 9.30. Uh, but even ahead of that, we will give you some filler here on our show this okay, morning. Okay, and we'll wrap up the whole show with a lot more interesting issues and entertainment. Mm -hmm. But as always, get interactive throughout the rest of the morning. On Facebook, we have Join Us on TV, and then we also have our WhatsApp platform. Yeah, uh, and I, I think it was two weeks ago that we had a conversation on unemployment. We brought in entrepreneurs here to inspire all of us to understand how they started mm. uh, so that we can also do something on our own. But you and I know that not everybody can be an entrepreneur. And that's why today on the show, uh, there's a group that's organizing a forum to discuss unemployment among the youth. And there will be politicians, decision makers right there. We want to tap into that conversation as well. That will be here on the AM show. Okay, right now we'll have to bring in the news. It's up next. Health workers at the Piki Government Hospital in the South Dying District of the Volta region are handicapped in providing accident victims with effective medical emergency care. Now, this is because the facility lacks a well-equipped and befitting emergency unit. Currently, hospital authorities have converted a session of the male ward of the facility into an emergency 
uh, unit to help attend to accident victims. Peki Government Hospital is the first major health facility located on the Eastern Corridor Road in the Volta region. Due to its proximity to the busy road, all motor accidents on the Isukuma Kweva stretch are reported to the facility. The hospital receives approximately about 13 accident cases monthly, out of which three are major cases. But the absence of an emergency unit makes it difficult for health officials to give accident victims an effective emergency medical care. Currently, a section of the male ward of the facility has been converted into an emergency unit to treat accident victims rushed there. The medical superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Julius Oklu, stressed the need for a well-equipped emergency unit to enhance healthcare delivery at the facility. Uh, as a journey to, on the Eastern Corridor Road, the only hospital in the way, apart from all the hospitals, the key government hospital. And the road is so good that we have frequent accidents on the road. And we don't have any emergency unit in the hospital. So when we have cases, we put all together, adults and children as well, and that becomes a problem for us. So we would like you to help us have an emergency unit which can address this problem. We also have problems with other equipment. Our extra machine breaks down frequently, and currently we, have, we haven't got any extra machine. We haven't got any ultrasound machine. Uh, that's another problem. We have only one or two clips. He was also unhappy about the delay in the payment of NHIS claims, which he says is affecting day-to-day -day administration of the hospital. The problem is with the inflow of funds from the national health insurance. So what we do is we try to uh, reduce our capital expenditure. We don't invest much on structures, building structures, but we try to maintain the ones which we have. We try to make sure that uh, we take our monies, in fact, if people are abscond, we don't allow people to abscond, so the absconded cases reduce, and we try to use our money judiciously uh, so that we can uh, 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 get uh, the work going. Uh, that is how we manage to mitigate it. In the meantime, a group of Peki citizens under the umbrella, Peki again has presented four surgical beds and medical consumables to the hospital. The presentation is part of the activities earmarked to launch the group. Founder of the group, Theophilos Afenya, said their core objective is to make both human and material resources available to provide development in the areas of health, education and sanitation to restore Peki's image. We are also looking at equity development so that uh, we know the hospital will also play its role and then we also have a role to play so that then that development should be more serious if we should be going forward so that we can also help the hospital through internally generated funds. That is our outlook. Our outlook is to make sure you know, the hospital gets better, the schools get better. We, we, we are also looking at helping the area with uh, project financing because most of us are into finance and also do infrastructure development. All these things are done up on our programs. The group also undertook a medical screening exercise for the aged. Fred Kwame Asari's report for Joy News. The Attorney General and Minister for Justice, Marietta Brewer-Pong, says the amendment of the Constitution to have the election date move from November 7 to the uh, first Monday of November will ensure there's sufficient time for a change in government in the events there's a runoff during the elections. The Attorney General was speaking at a public forum organized by the Parliamentary Committee on Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs, where Joseph Akoble came through with this report. The forum aimed to offer political parties an opportunity to make inputs into the work of the committee. The governing NDC was represented by John Sinesia Ketia, while the NPP was represented by the manager of the party's 2016 campaign, Peter McMenu. The PPP and NDP were also represented. 
Attorney General Mariata Briopon explained how crucial the amendment is. Now, what the amendment does is to say that the general election of members of parliament shall be held on the first Monday of November before the expiration of the period specified in clause one of that article and a session of parliament shall be appointed to commence within 14 days after the expiration of that period. Now it is our view that once this amendment is effected there will be sufficient time for a smooth transition, particularly in instances where there is a runoff election. So simply put, this amendment is to help all of us ensure a smooth transition. The NPP raised concerns about the timing of the legislation with less than six months to the election and the readiness of the Electoral Commission to conduct the polls. I want the Electoral Commission to tell us that the register for the upcoming elections will be ready within the as stipulated in the CI-91 because minimum 21 days to the election, the law says they should give both car parties certified copy of the register. The law CI-91 also says that Three months after the voter registration, that is, a provisional register will be compiled and copies given to political parties before exhibition. The NDC, meanwhile, says it is comfortable with the date change, but will also not mind if it remains unchanged. Once it has generally been agreed by civil society, by political parties, and then before the Electoral Commission was um, virtually convinced to adapt it, it shouldn't generate any controversy again. I must also add that as a political party, we don't have any hard and fast position which way this uh, amendment goes at all. We are committed to the consensus position that has been adopted or that we believe has been uh, adopted by the nation. The committee will be interacting with the Electoral Commission on Wednesday, July 13. For Joy News, Joseph Akabli. Well, Member of Parliament for Ablekuba West, uh, Esula. Uh, Osu Ekufol is warning of possible chaos on election day over plans by the Electoral Commission to move away from the no verification, no vote provision in its regulations. The Commission has laid an election regulation instrument in Parliament to get backing for its proposal to allow manual voting. If passed by the House, it will mean persons with credible particulars to vote will be allowed to do so even if rejected by the biometric machine on election day. Joy News is also learning both parties kicked against the proposal at the pre laid consideration, but the EC went ahead and adopted it. As Lowuswe Kofu, who is a member of the subsidiary legislation, tells our parliamentary correspondent Elton Brobe the provision poses a threat to the country's democratic dispensation. It is obvious that the Electoral Commission is adamant on setting that aside and making nonsense of the expense that we've incurred to provide verification machines in all polling stations. In fact, not one, but two, if that, that's what they have informed the House that they are going to do. What's the point in having verification machines if we're going to make it possible for voters who are not verified to vote? Even though I was distressed that in certain parts of the country the rules were not allowed but were uh, relaxed but were enforced strictly, while in other parts of the country um, chiefs, the president and others were able to intervene and people were allowed to vote without being verified, the uneven application of the law, I think it would be better if as a nation we are taking the decision that imperfect as it is, it is a, 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 the lesser of two evils, and it is better to disallow a few individuals the right to vote than to turn the, 
the entire protective system that we have spent a lot of money to procure to disable it from functioning because we have provided this loophole in our law. It is bad, it is wrong, and I sincerely hope that after the elections, I would not have to say, I told you so. Keep the state. But you, 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 for you, this should be withdrawn and a new one laid to absolutely. address this I think, concern. Absolutely. I think this 32 5. 32 regulation 32.5 of CI 94 is bad. It is a disaster waiting to happen. We may wake up on the day after the election and rule the day. There will be incidents which will occur during the election based on this, which will create confusion in polling stations. And we may realize belatedly that we ought not to have done this. The money we have spent to procure two verification machines for each polling station by this clause has been rendered a waste of money. And um, I sincerely hope that I'm not proved right. But I think if it is at all possible, the Electoral Commission should withdraw this and relay it without five. And let us go with a no verification, no vote, and see whether at the end of the day we will not have a more peaceful election than what I fear may happen if this clause is in the law. And the election regulation instrument also contains punishment for electoral offenses by electoral commission officials on election day. According to the CI, staff or persons recruited by the electoral commission could be sentenced to a jail term of up to two years or a fine if their conduct on election day is found inconsistent with the law. Esla Owusu Ekufu welcomed this provision. Is this the only concern you have of the regulation? So far, I am yet to go through it with a fine tooth comb. But one concern which was raised, because we hadn't seen it, but I have checked and it is there, that elections officials who do not do the work that they are supposed There's to no do, punishment for there is a punishment for them. So I am happy that um, uh, Regulation 44 provides for elections offenses. And 44.2 says that an election officer who is required to perform a function under these regulations but fails to perform that function commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a fine of not more than 500 penalty units or to a term of imprisonment of not more than two years or to both. And that's good. For me, that's very good. So it's. Um, we do not have the 2012 scenario where elections presiding officers were supposed to sign uh, b uh, declaration sheets and refused to do that. And there was nothing anybody could do to sanction them because the law did not provide for sanctions for them. And the National Media Commission has also vowed to get tough for media houses which allow the use of intemperate and inflammatory comments on their platforms as the 2016 elections also draws near. This follows reports and several complaints about the increasing amount of foul language being used in the media. Only last week, some panelists on Accra-based Muntia FM were summoned by the Supreme Court for threatening judges during a radio discussion. At a news conference in Accra Monday, the Media Commission disclosed it has developed new guidelines to check the use of inflammatory language. NMC Chairman Chrissy Jana Pinting, who announced the guidelines, is hopeful it will ensure the media behaves professionally ahead of the polls. However, as we have seen, in the course of political campaigns, some people resort to the use of inflammatory, distasteful, and provocative language. And this situation has understandably caused alarm among the population. The recent offensive effusions by some radio panelists at a radio station underscores the alarm and the need for the nation to ensure that the abuse of our airwaves does not lead to violence before, during, or after the elections. We are all aware of the role of the media in the election-related violence in Kenya in 2012, and 
before then of the Rwanda genocide of 1994, among many such tragedies. Dear friends, as I said earlier, there have been many calls on the NMC to do something about the deteriorating standards of political communication in the media. And we fully appreciate why this is so. However, we would like to assure Ghanaians that while we are able to deal with these eruptions as they occur, we have deployed and continue to use strategies that in the long term will rid us of such abuses of our media resources, especially broadcasting. As you're aware, the NMC has developed a number of documents that contain guidelines for many media activities. These include the guidelines on political journalism, which directly addresses many of the violations in question. Other guidelines in the series are guidelines for political advertising, guidelines for local language broadcasting, guidelines on the fair and equitable coverage of all parties by the state-owned media, print media guidelines, and others. We urge all practitioners, media practitioners, to incorporate these guidelines in their everyday work. And the commission has often been accused of not having the teeth to bite and also failing to act in situations where it is expected to intervene. It has, uh, the commission has defended itself saying it resorts to mediation and negotiation to settle disputes which can lead to delays. George Sapon is executive secretary of the National Media Commission. There are two provisions in the law that you need to take note of. The earlier provision the chairman read, which says the commission should take all appropriate measures, you understand. Therefore, if the commission, our view is that if the commission considers an intervention so much, the commission would be within the try to do that. And we've done that a number of times. But if the person is, up, is using the specific, did you say route? Or root this morning. <laughs> There's a joke between myself and the chairman this morning. Whether if you take the complaint route or route, I use the first one, <laughs> village school. Then we must necessarily apply the complaints law. For those of you who follow the law very closely, there was a similar matter before the Supreme Court regarding Shraj. I hope you recall, in which the court said in circumstances of that matter, there must necessarily be a complainant. So one needs to apply the law with an understanding of the court's interpretation of similar rules. So that is our answer. There are two possibilities, the complaint route and the commission's own internal processes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, in other news, President John Dramani Mahama has reaffirmed his commitment to give a facelift to the Bogatanga Boku Road, which has been in some bad shape for over a couple of years. The president, who is on a two-day visit in the region as part of his Accounting to the People tour, was speaking at a salt-cutting ceremony for the construction of the road at Tili, near Zibela, in the Boku West District of the Upper East Region. It is 111 kilometers. It has been awarded to Keros Galvao, which is the company that was working on the Tamale Airport. They finished their work on the Tamale Airport, so they are moving all their equipment to the Bulga Boku Road to continue that project. The, pro the project has a dual carriage or what our people call double road from Bulga to the outskirts of Bulga. It also has double road through Zebila Township. And then it has double road entering into Boko Township. And every community the road goes through will get new street lights. Every community along the road will get new street lights. 
It has speed ramps so that cars will slow down when they are entering communities. It has zebra crossings. It has bus stops and everything that makes for a modern roadway. And so we've done that short cutting. And this is our next assignment here. But time is fast spent. Like I said, it's almost 5 p.m. And as always, this is your election headquarters, and we bring you uh, the right soundbite as far as the election is concerned. But especially on the AM show, we have our own. All right, we're getting lots of your messages on 0560-800,000. We will read a few. Still ahead, we've got the newspapers, and we're talking unemployment in a whole different way this morning here on our show as well. Uh, this one from... Nurokina at Sishi Bekwai. Thank you for the beautiful things that you say about us. And somebody's accusing me of not reading uh, his or her messages. It says, uh, Mama, you don't read my messages. Talking of unemployment, 2015 batches of the three private colleges of education have still not been posted. It's almost a year now. Let the government know that September will surely come before November 7. <laughs> Since they don't see us as Ghanaians, we will also forget about them. Kindly include your name when you send us messages. This one says, most Ghanaians have lost trust in the EC due to their attitude towards the Volta, Volta's register. Until they regain their trust, most Ghanaians will not see this election as credible enough. John Yinzo at Enyema. Uh, well, John, I mean, don't give up yet. There are still a lot of things that, you know, are being put in place. Look at this amendment and uh, the forum called yesterday in Parliament, for instance. There's a lot of transparency. Uh, so please begin to change your mind. This one says, good morning, Mama Vian Roland. May God bless you. Uh, Okay. <laughs> okay, Roland. Stephen uh, Efriation in Kipkos is thinking that it's like, it's like I'm going to Holy Child. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A friend of mine also said she, she looked like uh, her time in GHS. <laughs> right. <laughs> that got you laughing. If you get me a, a chop box, you know, yeah, you, know you can. Imagine. You can keep me on the road to Holy, <laughs> holy Child, I won't yeah, mind. Holy Child School. Another, what, three years? Or are we doing four or three years? No, three years. Three years. That won't be bad. Perhaps one government changes, <laughs> we'll decide to make it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll hold on to the rest of the messages. Uh, we'll come back with the newspapers and we'll share what you're saying uh, on WhatsApp as well. Just stay on. We'll be right back, right here.